Okay. I've got the new game up. And we're going to get ourselves started now. <laughs> you guys are having fun with the stream boss, aren't you? I don't know. I don't know. I The only way I was able to get the stream boss was through a subscription to Streamlabs. Because it's one of the uh, overlays. So, alright. I might need to adjust this just a little bit, and I'm tr cutting off the title. One second. There we go, that's a bit better. Whoop. Much better. Alright. New game. Yes. It's an eye. are having fun. La, la, la. Bowler hat. <laughs> Ow! Oops. One last second. I still have my death count up, and I don't need that for right now. Ah! What's this? Look like Sims. La, la, la. Mm, yeah, I'm not doing the death count for this game because that would require me putting up another uh, text thing, and I'm not gonna deal with that. It's a puppet show. Ah. Is a little uncanny valley. Kid, you probably shouldn't have that saber. Oh, look! It's a book! Maybe it's a book about pirates with a treasure map. No, I don't think so. I wish that I had seen through all your lies. Oh, start from the beginning, not the middle. And so I decided to pick up my pen to relate the most disturbing episode of my life thus far. It, was paid on a it all began early one morning in 1898, when Sherlock Holmes invited me to accompany him on a visit to the Marquis of Conningham. 1898, huh? What's Crazy eyes. We can now go and inform the Marquis that we have found the Samoan necklace, and very much faster than Inspector Baines, too, which pleases me. Have you really solved the theft, Holmes? And so quickly? I have indeed, Watson. And believe me, it was completely unnecessary to spread out all over London, as our friend Baines thought was best. He likes to boast that his methods are equal to mine, but once again the outcome has contradicted him. After all these years of accompanying you upon your investigations, I thought that by now I should be reasonably capable of following your train of thought. But in this particular case, I must admit that I don't understand anything at all. Ah, you see, but you do not observe, Watson. There lies the difference. It is a matter of course. A matter of course? In the middle of the night, when everyone is fast asleep, the service bell within that room rings out and alerts the servants. They dress quickly and come running. But the door <laughs> is locked, dog. and there is a strong smell of burning from within. 
A few seconds later, the master of the house himself, the robbed Marchioness's husband, the Marquis of Conningham, arrives and unlocks the door using the sole key. A fire has started inside the room, but they have managed to arrive in time to put it out. It is at that moment that the Marquis realizes that the famous Samoan necklace, which had been safe within its glass cabinet only a few hours earlier, has now disappeared. In order to explain, let us confirm my theory before the arrival of Inspector Baines. All right, I control Sherlock Holmes to look around, use mouse to walk in a desired direction, use WSD to get the broken showcase and click on it. Where was the broken showcase? It was right here. This window was cut with a diamond. A clean, discreet piece of work. This is where the necklace was. See how tiny the hole is, and not one fingerprint upon the window. Hmm. Okay. Uh, after a clue is examined, the icon will turn green. Please move Sherlock Holmes near the left window. I should see two icons simultaneously. All the windows are locked. They've not been forced. A mark, undoubtedly, made by a diamond. Someone tried to cut the glass, but he was interrupted. Therefore, the thief tried to escape through the window, but he was interrupted. Go to the chimney, you'll see a hand icon on the magnifying glass. Take it by clicking on it. Okay, I can open my inventory by clicking the right mouse button. While playing, you can always activate any of your items from your inventory by using the mouse wheel. Okay, so I've got matches, pocket knife, and magnifying glass. Near the piano, um, some of the music scores are on the floor. You can activate an item by selecting it directly, uh, se selecting it in your inventory or directly in the game by scrolling your wheel mouse wheel. Use a mi mi magnifying glass near the window. Or not the Let us examine the crumpled scores that have fallen off the piano. Let us examine the crumpled scores that have fallen off the piano. Oh, duh. There it is. These sooty prints were left by a tiny hand. I don't understand why these music scores are covered with soot. Is that it? Press R or the middle mouse button to switch to first uh, person mode. Use W uh, uh, WASDA to move your character. Okay. Left shift. Press R to switch. Move character. Just left. Click on the destination that you want. Double click to run. Okay, six cents. Ooh. A candle. It must have fallen from the chandelier. These documents are not very interesting, even though they're addressed to the Minister of Maritime Affairs. The Marquis himself. The fire started here, just beneath the bell pull. Whoever pulled the cord would have had his feet in the fire, unless it was pulled before the fire started. 
Heading towards his chosen escape route, probably the window, the thief knocked over the stool, which then caught fire. But why didn't he try to put the fire out at once? Strange. There are some objects here that have been knocked over. So many clues here. Footprints. You are not going to get on your knees to examine them. There is no need. It is soot. The servants must have trodden in it while they were putting out the fire. So the chest here. wasn't opened. The necklace wasn't in it. When the servants arrived at the door, having been alerted by the bell, they saw evidence of the theft and the fire, but they didn't see the thief. This door is very hard to force. The Marquis is the only person to have the key. The thief could not get out through here until eventually, when the door was opened by the servants. So maybe they hid? Not very well kept, this aquarium. I can see a dead fish floating on the surface. This draft screen makes an ideal hiding place. As the theft was committed at night, I conclude that the thief hid himself behind the draft screen and waited until he was alone in the room. Strange, there aren't any prints, yet I'm sure that the thief hid here. Ah, Mr. Holmes, you're already here. Good morning, Inspector. You've arrived just in time. <laughs> Scotland Yard arrives like the cavalry, always in the nick of time. Ah, but I know that satisfied expression, Mr. Holmes. Have you already solved the case? It's possible. We have retraced the thief's rather unusual footsteps. He is a true acrobat. But what I cannot understand is that when the servants entered the room, there was no one to be seen. An acrobat, perhaps, but an invisible one? <laughs> I do not think so. The only explanation is that the thief escaped before the servants arrived. I don't know how, but there is no other way. There's always a Half a way. point for the doctor, nil for the inspector. <laughs> I'm pleased to see that you find the situation amusing, Mr. Holmes. Very well then, explain. Dr. Watson was correct when he mentioned acrobatics, but he is mistaken about the nature of the acrobat. As for you, Baines, you're quite incorrect, as the thief was in the room when the servants entered. Explain, for heaven's sake, Mr. Holmes. Watson, how could a thief be missed in the middle of eight men? I don't know. Because he is very small? Stop teasing us, Holmes. Exactly. Because he is small. Small and remarkably agile. You're thinking of a monkey? And a trained monkey at that. Without a doubt, a Leontopicathus rosalia from Central America. It is a monkey. The animal had been hidden inside the room for several hours, calmly awaiting the signal from his master. Once night had fallen and the room was empty, a high-frequency whistle alerted the monkey that it was time to begin the procedure for which he had been trained. The monkey emerged from his hiding place and used the point of a diamond to open the glass cabinet and steal the necklace. He headed across to the window by the chimney, but knocked over the stool which in turn knocked aside the fire guard and started the fire. The frightened monkey jumped from the chimney by swinging from the bell pull, thus alerting the house servants. He then went to the window and began to use his diamond to cut a hole, but was interrupted by the staff trying to gain entry via the door, and he panicked again. He ran across the piano, scattering the music scores onto the floor, before hiding inside the chandelier, knocking over a candle. Finally, the servants and the Marquis entered the room, leaving the door open while they put out the fire. It was during the confusion that our agile little thief made his escape through the doorway. As simple as that. A brilliant explanation! Bravo, Holmes! And the necklace? I can see it from here, my friends. It's right in front of us. We have searched the room from top to bottom, Holmes. How were we unable to find it? Because we paid insufficient attention to the only victim of this affair. What victim? No one is dead? Yes, Watson. Dead. 
a poor goldfish whose destiny was to die, crushed by one of the most precious necklaces in England. The aquarium is just beneath the chandelier, I understand. The little monkey had likely hung the necklace around its neck and lost it when he leapt from the chandelier. The jewels fell into the aquarium where they remain now. Marquis, here is your necklace, intact, just a little wet. Just a Mr. Little Holmes, wet. this brilliant demonstration does credit to your reputation. Thank you so much, Marquis. Do you wish to verify the authenticity of your jewel? No, I recognize it. I have spent many hours admiring it, you know. Good. I will return it to its box and... Inspector, a bank has just been held up. You must follow me at once. Orders of Scotland Yard. What times? Sirs... Duty calls. My regards, Marquis. And well done again, Mr. Holmes. There, the necklace is in its box. We've lost enough time here. Let's go home, Watson. Ah, very well, as you wish. A good day to you, Marquis. With pleasure, gentlemen. And once again, thank you. This morning's newspaper. Holmes, have you read this article about you? No, Watson, not yet, and I won't have time to. Read it before you leave. It's outrageous. If you insist. Okay. Read the paper, Holmes. I'm trying to. Read the paper, Holmes. Give me the paper. There we go. All right. Globe Explorer. Sherlock Holmes at the home of Mar the Marquess of Cunningham. The investigation is a fiasco. Yesterday, the celebrated detective Sherlock Holmes was invited to the manor of the Marquess of Cunningham to supply his conclusions following his investigation into the disappearance of the priceless Samoan necklace. It should be recalled that the lady called in the detective after the police appeared, flummoxed in the face of the astonishing circumstances surrounding the theft. Indeed, the valuable piece of jewelry disappeared while the door to the room in which it was displayed was locked. The alarm was raised by the servants, alerted by the room service bell ringing out during the night. When the Marquis... Uh, the only person in possession of the key opened the door. Everyone rushed in to extinguish a fire that had started before it was noticed the necklace had vanished. The most astonishing factor is that no thief was found within the room and all exits were closed. As usual, Mr. Holmes resolved the case in the twinkling of an eye and the jewel was recovered. I will not waste my time on the various explanations as to the disappearance, because I would prefer to draw your attention, dear readers, to the last surprising de developments in, in the case. Following the departure of Sherlock Holmes, who placed the necklace in the safe himself, the Marquis noticed that the jewel was nothing but a poor copy of the original. Let it not be forgotten that the Samoan necklace, although plain and without ornament, is unique because of the rarity of its pearls. Pearls which are only found in a small part of the lagoon of the archipelago of the same name, and to which scientists attribute their exceptional quality to the strong density of crystal of argonite uh, that they are made of. The priceless necklace brought here at the beginning of the century by Lord Fenton Arwick, the Marquis grandfather and an eminent explorer, should have been part of her daughter's dowry for her marriage to the Duke of Newcastle. So I'm going to place a simple question. 
Should we not, in all open-mindedness, ask ourselves if the necklace was not simply and deliberately exchanged for a fake by Mr. Holmes himself? I am aware, dear readers, that the brutal brutality of this question, without any uh, preconceptions, may certainly shock some of you. But the facts are there, and our thoughts and judgments should not be confused with the regard which we all share for the famous detective. It is not the first time the Globe Explorer has expressed its reservations as to Sherlock Holmes' methods. Do not forget our counter-investigation into the escape of Arsène Lupin, the, Lupin? Uh, the Frenchman who took malign pleasure in tarnishing the image of our royal family and who, by lucky chance, managed to elude capture by Mr. Holmes. At the time, we did not hesitate to consider consider a tacit complicity on the part of the latter. For those who are familiar with Mr. Holmes, it is quite apparent that his character traits show more of the opportunist, opportunist and brilliant uh, usurper than that of altruistic defender of the law. I would draw the attention of our readers to the suggestion that the description of this gentleman provided by his friend Dr. John Watson through his stories is a long way for, from the truth. Indeed, his behavior is derisive, contemptuous, haughty, and offensive towards the police, and in particular towards Inspector Baines, replacing Inspector Lestrade, who is currently convalescent, and a hap habitual abuser of narcotics such as heroin and cocaine. This is why, dear readers, it is important to disregard Sherlock Holmes' good reputation in order to form an objective opinion and ask the pertinent questions. Was the necklace that Holmes found already a fake? If that was the case, why did he not mention it? And why should he insist on placing it back within the safe himself? Has the detective some un Blech. Has the detective some unsavory interest in this affair, or is it a simple case of deceit in order to steal the extraordinary Samoan necklace? It is up to you, dear readers, to form your own opinions, but you can count upon your humble servant to continue revealing to the public the doubtful methods and motivations of one who in the future I shall not hesitate to call Sherlock Holmes the usurper. To be continued, O oh, Farley. He did offer the Marquis the opportunity to examine it. That was totally left out of there. Prince Woodville, French culinary expert and bagpipe player, might be our next king. That's not so shocking, my dear fellow. You know exactly to which article I'm referring, Holmes. How can Farley dare to tarnish your reputation like that? You know, Watson, that wherever glory walks, jealousy is bound to follow. As for the forgery of the necklace, I suspect that we shall soon be enlightened in this regard. Come in, Inspector Baines. The door's open. <laughs> ah, Mr. Holmes. How did you know I was here? You are one of our rare visitors who avoids the second-to-last step of the stairs, which creaks dreadfully. And if I add the clinking of the handcuffs at your belt, to what do we owe the pleasure of your visit, Inspector? Have you read that rag? Uh, slander necklace. Necklace. Inspector, I assume that you have the fake necklace with you. It's why you're here. Your superiors would like me to examine it. Indeed. They would like you to confirm or deny putting this fake in the box. Can't that wait? I must go to the house of Lord Peregrine Maitland, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. Inspector, can you explain this slander? Has the necklace of the Samoas really been replaced by a fake? I don't know how the reporter got hold of the information, the but it's true. About the necklace, of course. I wouldn't permit myself to question the integrity and honesty of Mr. Holmes. The necklace is a forgery? Impossible! I saw the Marquis authenticated before my very eyes, before Holmes returned it to its place. Mr. Holmes, the Marquis believes Osmond Farley's theory. I shouldn't be surprised if the reporter isn't behind all this slander about you. He's a freelancer, well known for his explosive and subjective articles. In any case, the Marquis assures us that you were the last person to have the necklace in your hands. Let's return to the Marquis's house, Holmes. 
I'm sure that we'll have no trouble in taking apart this theory. It is unnecessary. Such allegations collapse on their own, like one of Mrs. Hudson's souffles. Let <laughs> us leave the police to solve this problem and turn our attention to the matters in hand. Perhaps you are right, Holmes. Honestly, uh, Watson's acting is like except over exceptionally British, and it's kind of hilarious. And the Marchioness? She is beside herself. Without the necklace, her marriage is compromised. It is the principal item of a young woman's dowry. What a lovely marriage. Holmes, forgive me for insisting, but don't you want to examine the fake jewelry? Watson, I have an appointment, and it's out of the question that I arrive late. It will only take you a couple of minutes. You really must quell the suspicions put forward in this appalling article. If you will allow me, Inspector, be my guest. Also, I noticed that the uh, bullet well. holes are in the shape of a V and an R. Uh, those ones. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. What do you think, Holmes? Oh, there it is. What do you think, Holmes? I think this was uh, made in 2016. This pearl is a different color. These three pearls are of poor quality. Is that it? This pearl is too small, too many defects. This necklace is a fake. This is nothing but a vulgar copy, and at a glance it would appear that the forger has intended for it to be seen as such. How could we have been fooled by such a blatant imitation? I don't understand. Yeah, yes, it's a really how is it possible? Too. Holmes, do you have a theory about this? I have absolutely no idea. You insisted that I examine the necklace, and I have done so. Now it is important that I keep my appointment. I'm sure, Inspector, that you will throw some light on this affair. Oh, Holmes. You may accompany me, Watson, if you care to do so. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'll keep you informed as to my inquiries. Yeah, Holmes is acting Goodbye, very, Inspector. Uh... You mentioned a bishop, didn't you? Are we going to his home? Yes, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. I put his address on our map of London on my desk. Would you get it for me, please? All right, Holmes. Wait, what am I getting? on my desk, okay. Holmes's homemade analyzer. The work table, where Holmes analyzes things. Okay, I guess this is not the desk he's... Okay, this is not the desk he was talking about. It's that one. I have found your map. The police? Already? How did you know? May we no, see what? the Bishop of Knightsbridge? Yes. Yes, of course. But come in. That's ominous. What has happened, Reverend? What? I... I don't know. It was last night, I think. I only just arrived, and I have made this macabre discovery. My God. How horrible. I haven't called anyone. How did you know that? Holmes, look! The bishop, appallingly mutilated. How dreadful. Mutilated and killed. Ugh. He was such a good man. How could anyone be so brutal? Look at him. He is barely recognizable now. 
How could any of God's children be responsible for that? They were evidently unworthy children, Reverend. Now do please try to calm yourself and focus, because we will need your assistance. Do you have any idea as to the motive behind this? I haven't had time to do an inventory, but nothing appears to have been stolen. And anyway, His Excellency didn't own anything of great value. I don't know what else I can tell you. Note this down, please, Doctor. Doctor? But you aren't the police? No, Reverend. I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. We are here at the request of the Bishop. In that case, I must ask... Okay, I'll... I'll reinstitute the death chat. Give me one second, I'll get it pulled up. Death toll... And what? We're already up to two, I believe. Whoops. Two. Done. There we go. ...to leave. And not to touch Good anything. Habits. I must get in touch with the authorities without further delay. A reverend, when the inspectors of Scotland Yard find themselves at a dead end, no, which they, they quite too. often do, I assure you, then they turn Did to me for the help. Goldfish? If you allow us to continue our investigation, then you shall have the answers to all the of your questions. Died. Out of the question! I don't even know you! <laughs> I'm going to call the police, whether you like it or not. It would be better for everyone, reverend, if you kept your temper. Watson, are you taking notes? This affair promises to be a complex one. Therefore, we must not overlook the slightest detail. Yes, Holmes. I am keeping a meticulous set of notes. I have created a very clever deduction board. One thing we can be sure of at the moment is that this crime was not for gain. The Reverend has informed us that nothing valuable was stolen. And indeed, it would seem that the Bishop had nothing of any worth to take. Very good, Watson. Do continue. Control Sherlock Holmes. Let's start looking. Uh, what's that? That's. That seems. This stove is filled to overflowing. The fingers have been crushed and violently struck. Okay. A piece of rope that was used to tie up that poor man. The fingers have been crushed and violently struck. Okay. His forearms have been ripped. Pieces of skin have been torn off. Yeah. What do you think, Watson? I'd say that he was eaten alive. Yet I've noticed a curious degeneration of the skin tissue around the wounds. His stomach is covered in scratches. Quite evidently, they yeah, weren't sorry. made recently. So, these wounds were not made by his murderers. A bottle of whiskey. I can make out fingerprints stained with blood and dirt. A broken pile and blood near the neck. What a strange smell. <laughs> Chemical components, I think. There is blood on this paperweight. This paperweight was used to crush the victim's fingers. A broken bottle of whiskey. However, the Bishop of Knightsbridge was known for his sobriety. It would seem that the brutes who tortured the Bishop to death were intoxicated with alcohol. A bottle of whiskey. Uh -huh. I can make out fingerprints stained with blood and dirt. 
game. That's not what I wanted to look at. Thank you. You can see by his expression that he suffered terribly. His mouth is covered in blood, and I can make out strips of skin between his teeth. My dear friend, everything points to this man having gnawed at his own forearms. That's unbelievable, Ew. Holmes. That's gross. His chest has been lacerated, I would say, with a very sharp and fine blade. at his face his chest okay these burns are terrible he was burned on his legs his feet have been burned Hmm. My first impression is that he wears a size 9 shoe. You! But what does it matter, Holmes? This poor man was tied just below the knees. To stop him from walking, certainly, but mostly to free his feet. My God, Holmes, this man was horribly tortured. A finger. Apparently, it doesn't belong to the Bishop of Knightsbridge. How dreadful! Something is missing here. Oh, yes? And what might that be? His shoes. Watson, his shoes are missing. His shoes are missing. A whip? No. It is a discipline for self-flagellation. It's a cilice designed to bruise the person wearing it. The bishop wore it as repentance. This very pious man must have had the habit of mortifying his flesh as a means of repentance. Thanks, Chris. I need something. Reverend, I'm missing something, an implement with which to open this chest. Could you tell me where to find it? No, go to the devil! What are you afraid of, Reverend? What is inside the chest? I'm not afraid of anything. In fact, I do have the necessary implements, but if I have to give them to anyone, it will be to a representative of the law and no one else. The picture of Peregrine Maitland, commander of the now. infantry brigade uh, of Her Majesty's Guards at Waterloo. <laughs> the Bishop of Knightsbridge has the same name as his ancestor, an illustrious body. family. Okay, apparently there was... Did I miss something? This metal rod is for fastening the chillies. These traces reveal that the thieves tried to open this chest. I need something. Impossible to open it. Wonder if maybe. I am missing some information. I cannot leave now. I don't want to leave. I want to see what's at the door. Watch where you're putting your feet, Watson. Have you noticed these prints upon the ground? Well, yes, those muddy marks. 
See here, Watson, footprints can often provide more vital information than the very best of informants. Yes, if you know how to make them talk, that is. It's child's play, Watson. We will begin by excluding the contaminating prints, which are yours and mine from where we came in, and those of our dear Reverend who was so impatient to call the police. Size nine. Okay. Size nine. Size nine. Size nine and a half. Size nine and a half. Size nine. Nothing of interest here. This print came from an expensive pair of shoes, and it seems recent. It is not a laborer's shoe. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. Hobnail boots. Hobnail boots like a fragment of stone. Peculiar. Well-worn shoes with an odd pattern on the soles. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. <laughs> All the men left the room, jumping on one leg. Uh, question one. Uh, so... Three, maybe? No. There was... One person with nine and a half size shoes. I think this was the bishop's shoe. Oh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Total of th three people. So, two criminals and the bishop. I think. And two of them had hobnail shoes and one had worn away soles. So, yes. That's not right. Start again. Really? Okay. Perfect. We now know that there were three crooks. I was wrong. Two lowly people and one rich, Richie Richie Richardson. Um, one man joined those who are in the room. One left the room wearing different shoes. One man was carried as to not leave footprints. Let's see. There's. Oh, excuse me. Um. That's pointing that way. That's pointing that way. That's pointing that way as well. These. Three were all pointing the other way. Um. I think one person left wearing different shoes because that random expensive shoe is throwing me off. Strange but true. One of the crooks was wearing a different pair of shoes when he left here. Therefore, we have three men who came in and left again, but one of them was wearing a different pair of shoes from the ones which he came in with. So he stole the so, shoes. So, all we have to do is look for a workman who likes Italian shoes. You have no right to search here. You have no right to search here. What should we do next, Holmes? Why don't you tell me? Oh, wait. Closed. The veranda door hasn't been forced. Strange. Reverend, might I have the key? No! You have no authority here. Let me call the police. Perhaps we should listen to him, Holmes. 
Perhaps you should let me get on with this, Watson. A surgical scalpel covered in blood. There isn't any doubt the wounds on the bishop were administered with this scalpel. This door has not been forced. Where does it lead, Reverend? To His Excellency's room. There is just a mattress and a stool. Let's verify that ourselves. The bishop's bedroom. It is very austere. Nothing in particular here. Nothing. Don't really see. I keep on attempting to see if there's any hints. Oh, here we go. Okay, so... The sh shoes are missing. Murderers left wearing the bishop's shoes. Uh, they are poor. I uh, didn't own anything of value, not even the safe. Miranda wasn't sure. Searched. They got the wrong person, or they took him by a surprise. Savagely tortured. He was mortified himself. Uh, he resisted the torture. They didn't get what they wanted. Okay. So maybe it confirms things green when it's correct. Himself. Broken flask has blood at its top. Uh, they tortured him with broken glass? I think it's one of the clergy. I think that one of them left wearing the shoes. Because the shoes are missing. So either they're selling shoes. No. They were looking for the. There it we is go. evident that the Bishop of Knightsbridge's killers were after something specific and that they did not find it. Reverend, I shall ask you one more time. Open the chest. The item they were seeking must still be inside. It is unlikely that they will let this matter rest. They will most certainly return to finish what they started. And I'm telling you once more, the chest is locked and shall remain so. Very well, we have reached an impasse. You are a stubborn man, Reverend. Watson, accompany our friend to the police station and return with Inspector Baines. Baines and no one else. I shall wait for you here. Go. Alone at last. Now I can continue my investigation. Good. This lock should be easy to pick. Let's see. I'm not 
not sure what I'm trying to do here. That's not right. Start again. That's not right. Start again. Okay, what am I trying to... Oh, wait. I've got it. So, that needs to go... down. To go up. That's not right. Start again. Yeah, that's what I just realized. There we are. It there is simplicity go. itself. There isn't anything much in this room. It must be used as a reading or meditation room. Come here. So much An juicy ink stain, evidence. Quite fresh. This stain is just on the edge of the rug. Let's see. There is nothing on the floor. Yet the ink must have soaked through the rug. I'm going to finish this room and then we're going to call it quits for the day. An ink stain. This inkwell was tipped over recently. The ink stain on the floor comes from the ink on the rug, but they are not in the same place. Someone has moved the rug recently. Interesting, interesting. That is curious. There is something strange on the floor. Certain stones have been marked out. Just like a chessboard. Hmm. That is curious. There is something strange on the floor. I need something. You need something. Uh, what do you need, Holmes? Uh, what's this? Oh, these are different metals that we've gotten. Stone fragment? That is curious. There is something strange on the floor. Certain stones have been marked out, just like a chessboard. I need something. Tell me, what do you need? Where would this rock fragment go? That is curious. There is something strange on the floor. Certain stones have... I need something. Yeah, I get that. That is curious. I need some. I'm trying to huh. God damn it. There is nothing on the floor, yet the ink must have soaked through the rug. <laughs> okay. Flask tortured with glass. Uh, they made him drink the contents of the glass. Okay, he gnawed himself. Alone at last. Now I can continue my investigation. 
Yeah, he was tortured with... Uh, with a scalpel. What about the scalpel? Maybe I can use the scalpel to pry up the floor? That's a valid point. Um, did I put it as he was tortured with it? The desk. Oh, there's other stuff over here. Something under here. Apparently, someone wanted to hide this statue. Catch. This horse resembles a large chess piece. So maybe there is a message underneath this statue. Let's see. What lack of imagination? Use your passion for chess. The last square on which the knight will place himself after having covered all the others will be the right one. I love you. This message was written by a woman, but for whom was it intended? Interesting, this chess game. That is curious. There is some- I need something. Is there anything else on the desk? Come and read me out. Yeah, the horse goes there somehow, but... It is 8 o'clock. Well, it's 5 past 8, actually. So, I'm gonna save. And, uh, it is time for us to exit. Did you enjoy? Did I make a good choice? Or did my dice make a good choice? Should I say? Yeah, I couldn't figure out what to uh, pick, so I just made a list of what I had in my um, in my seam. Steam library, and I rolled a d20, and this is what I came up with. I'm glad I did it. It's been fun so far. It's straining my deductive reasoning skills, but uh, yeah, it's it's fun and interesting, and you guys seem to be having fun with the stream boss for sure. What should we name the stream boss? Or should we name it at all? This is slimy kids. <laughs> we don't need to name them. Because he has his own name. After all, after I finish him off, I will become him. I don't know. Hobbit seems to be pretty intent on it. Oh, I never told you guys what the uh, what damage is it does. So, um, the bits deal one damage per amount of bits. Uh, each sub deals 300 points of damage. Each follow deals five points of damage. And uh, each donation deals uh, 200 points of damage per dollar. So, happy damage dealing. I'm gonna have to uh, 
this with my tip jar because uh, there's not going to be any room left soon. Because you guys are filling it up with cheers. I think that's the fullest I've ever seen it. That's really cool. <laughs> it was really cool watching you guys battle it. I had fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed. I certainly enjoyed the stream today, being with you lovely people. And as always, um, if you liked the video and you think it deserves a rating, drop a like and a follow. If you want to see more of this wonderful content, consider subscribing. And I do have a YouTube account as well, which will soon enough have exclusive content just for YouTube. So I hope you have a wonderful night and sleep well, my lovelies.